Play Baba Ki J. Today's Zoom Satsang. And we're going to continue with what we were speaking about last week, which was Navratri. Um, and this week we have more people, and particularly our Indian uh, devotees, who are just returning home from a very full Navratri, just in the nick of time before a huge flood took over the area. And also, we didn't hear from Italy. So we have Ramlota here and hopefully uh, perhaps some other representatives. So we're going to start with their sharing a little bit and ask them some questions. And then we'll open it up more broadly uh, to more questions and um, yeah, and input. So Bolivaba Kite, go ahead, Udai. Yeah. OK. Okay, good. Bole Baba Ki Jai. Jai. So, so this time I and uh, Ritu and uh, I think a little larger number than the last Navaratri. We were fortunate enough to, to be in Chilianola and um, Sandeep who's here, he was with us with his wife and uh, we spent the entire sort of nine days plus, 10 days, some of us, um, for the Navaratri. And overall, I think we had a very, very harmonious, peaceful, beautiful uh, Navaratri. And um, I would say everything went uh, very well. And we have been kind of learning and devising to kind of cope with the situation in the sense that there were a lot of people, um, you know, who, who did certain tasks in the past and we had taken it for granted over last 25, 30 years and some of them could not be with us. And we, we tried to kind of make do like, you know, and, and, and somehow in the end, maybe not uh, with 100% perfection, but, uh, to a large degree, uh, very satisfactory, very harmonious. It all went very well. And um, we tried to follow everything. We didn't have as many great singers um, that we have had in the past. Like, you know, I don't want to take all the names, but people like Pujari, et cetera, we felt their, their absence. But in, the, in their absence, we tried to make do with the best possible way we could and uh, people like Vinod Shastri and 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 few other people they did very I mean they worked very hard they tried very hard to come up our arrangements um, around the Dhuni our arrangements close the sound okay okay yeah I'll go to the other one so our sort of uh, arrangements worked out very well in the end. And um, I think both myself and Ritu, we came back with a sense of serenity and uh, recharged ourselves. And we were very, very, felt very lucky to be there, uh, blessed to be there during this time. So that's my opening remark, and I can come back again, uh, you know, with more points as we go. I was I was very touched when you said how blissful you felt after the nine days. Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, and um, I want to still emphasize that we we missed all the bonhomie and, and, you know, all our larger interactions that uh, we would have when we had a full house. I missed my very dear friends, Maria. Uh, but that said, those are existential realities. And one of the learnings is that, and this is what I think Babaji has prepared us also, that there will be kranti, means there will be, um, events which will be very disruptive and yet I think what he has taught us is to maintain our equanimity, the inner peace and move on. So I think to that extent we felt as Ritu, myself, 
and I think like Sandeep and all, all the other people who were there, to the large extent, we did maintain that equanimity. We did feel the, the blissful surroundings of, of Chilianola. We felt the presence of divine presence of first <laughs> Paramba Jagadamba. We felt the presence of Babaji. And we also felt deeply the presence of, of Muniraji. And the other redeeming feature of this year's Navaratri was a very large, large presence of the entire Muniraji's clan. There were at least 20 of them every day singing, making up for the absence of Pujari and all the other you know, people. So they were singing every day, morning and evening and so on. And they brought a lot of sort of, uh, you know, high energy to the to the celebration. Yeah. Thank you. Sandeep, do you want to share some? You need to unmute Sandeep. Oh, okay, sorry. Bole Baba Ki Jai. Bole Baba Ki As Pude Bhai put in, um, you know, attending uh, Navratri, be it in Harakhan or Chilinala, is always uh, a blissful experience. And uh, due to, you know, this COVID, uh, we have uh, not been able to meet our, you know, brothers and sisters uh, settled overseas. But uh, I am sure in due course of time, uh, when things will settle, we will have Pujari back on the stage singing and we will hear Raghu with his inspirational speeches. And- uh, You've so taken over, time, Sorry? You, you have took taken over. over, I heard at the Havans. I saw something, you've taken the duty over from me. Thank you very much. <laughs> no, no, he's only like Bharat, Raghu. He's only like Bharat, like when no, Ram no, is I'm... gone to the- uh, He's only filling up for you. <laughs> I'm only filling up for you, Raghu. And, I've done my uh, UPLM. I'm getting my pension now. I am. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> we, are, we are certainly, you know, at times I find very difficult to find words. And uh, uh, undoubtedly, you are very inspiring and your speeches are wonderful and they are very, very motivating. A big thank you, Raghu. And uh, I am sure uh, for. Uh, the Harakhan Navratri, I'm sure we will see many, many more family members of ours. So, so Raghu, if I may add in, uh, chip in, I think when I hear uh, Sandeep uh, speaking during the Havan, I, I, I see in that uh, like a voice coming from a distant Kosamui, you know, it's inspired by all the thoughts that you have... Uh, shared with us over the years. So okay. there is a continuity, you know, he's not, uh, you know, it's, it's more of the same. Yes. And, and, and you can accept it gracefully. <laughs> we can, Thank you. We can also let people know that it is in a book and it's called Inspirations. I think that's the title. Yes. And uh, it is all those speeches put together. Um, over the many years. It's amazing what we do one year, then we do it the next year and the next year, and all of a sudden it becomes a tradition and a book. It's, it's very beautiful to see that because sometimes I don't think we realize that the small steps we take each year, each day, uh, really do add up. So thank you for but putting that out. The so book cool. is actually only 10% of the speeches, huh? I mean, there is something. I want it to be add pretty boring. <laughs> okay, Raghu, we're going to listen to Sandeep now. <laughs> you know, yes, I want to add something. You know, uh, it adds to my faith. Uh, you know, last year uh, in the autumn Navratri, when Dr. Lal was seeking his opinion, I was a little apprehensive that we should not hold Navratri. Of course, due to the fears. But uh, we were very, very happy. In fact, uh, uh, not a case was detected in Chilean till the time 
uh, Navratri was happening in 2020. And uh, it's only after the Navratri was over, a few cases were found in Raniket and Chilyanwala. And this year also during Guru Purnima, we were a few of us and not again a case was found. But this Navratri, you know, the moment everybody left Chilyanwala for their homes, you know, this devastating situation started to arise all over Uttarakhand. So, you know, Babaji ensured that everybody is, you know, safe and reaches home. And only then did this, you know, uh, floods uh, started. So we, we need to be thankful to the divine that, uh, you know, everybody is safe and nothing, uh, uh, no damage was caused in Chilyanwala or, you know, in Harakhan for uh, during this uh, floods. Maybe Ritu, you want to share something? Well, I think I, I, I was extremely um, blessed to have been able to go to Chilenola this time. Uh, I missed going last year. And uh, one of the first things, which of course, uh, uh, apart from the blessings that you feel all around uh, Chilenola, the mountain range, the beautiful sun, the ashram, and um, uh, you know, chanting um, in the mandir. I, I did uh, feel very sentimental for the fact that so many of us were missing. And I think I felt um, that half of the family is not there. That was the first feeling that I did feel. And, uh, but because of the small numbers, the entire prayers and uh, all the proceedings were that much more, uh, what should I say, uh, blissful and meaningful and uh, uh, we got a whole lot more than we had thought that we would get. So it was, it was wonderful to be there, but we really did miss Pujari, Raghu, and all the others who come and make the whole thing, you know. Um, uh, I think I missed even Lakshmi, who used to do the garland so beautifully sitting there. Um, and many more, you know, it's, it's difficult to make a whole list, but um, uh, we hope that, I, I certainly hope, personally that I can meet all the rest of the family next time when we meet them. And it was truly a one felt the grace of Babaji all, all the way through. That goes without saying. And um, as Uday was also mentioning the Kwabi family, the ladies, they made up and they ensured that we all sort of sang and danced with them. Uh, <clears throat> and and uh, so we tried to make it like it was in the old times. And, and I hope we have been able to send you some of the vibes who are watching um, um, live on, 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 on the TV or, or on your mobile screen. And I think Raghu's posts were very good on Facebook. So despite being there, I read all of his posts and he kept uh, giving all such meaningful uh, uh, aspects of the Divine Mother. So Raghu, a big thumbs up to you for that. <laughs> Thank you. You're muted, uh, Uday. Yeah, I did because otherwise they cook them. So, on a lighter note, Raghu asked me today if I smoked any cigarettes while I was in the ashram. So, I had to tell him that things have changed now. You know, in the old days, we used to fill up ashtrays after ashtrays smoking there in the open and we didn't think anything. And over the years now, less and less number of people are smoking. And this year, because of his sort of his wife's uh, uh, indisposition, Alok, da, Alok Bhai was not able to come. So I didn't find enough company to, to smoke. I had taken a packet of cigarettes with me in the hope that I will smoke. And in the end, I wrote to Raghu that I had to sit in the kind of privacy of my room to smoke a cigarette every day because I couldn't smoke in public anymore. <laughs> so things have changed a little bit, uh, you know, so. 
Thumbs up for you, Odai, that you're confessing this in front of the world. <laughs> uh, only the I'm getting the minor ones out of the way. <laughs> Thank you. So Ramlota or Sandeep, do you want to share any more? You're muted again. I'm sorry, I uh, I, I, I uh, Ure Bhai and Rituji have spoken, but uh, okay. it Sandeep was divine. Matara is still as good as before, and despite Sorry? any COVID, there were many people who came and uh, part, uh, you know, uh, took the bandara. The villagers came in 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 full Monty. There was no let up on that. Am I right, Sandeep? So Sorry, I didn't get you, Rituji. Huh? I didn't get you. No, Ritu just mentioned that we had wonderful bandaras, and even though our numbers were small, the villagers made up in large numbers, especially towards the end of the Navaratri. So, they so there were several hundred people partaking in the bandara every day, and we have a now a secured area because earlier that area was open. So yes. there were a lot of monkeys and all that coming. So now that whole area has been kind of fenced in a way that we are not disturbed while having our, our prashad. So a couple of hundred people can sit there and not be disturbed. So that was, a, I think, a, a, a welcome improvement on our facilities. Yeah. So Sandeep, okay. have you always been in charge of the Bandaras for many, many years now? I actually feel, uh, Ramloti, when you offer a bandara in a, in, a, in a temple or for a good cause, uh, you know, Ma Annapurna, she comes. This is what I've been taught by my mother, that whenever you cook a feast for, you know, gods or for a bandara, Ma Annapurna comes and supervises herself and uh, she alters and she you know, kind of uh, rectifies the mistake that the kitchen and the kitchen team has committed. So whenever you offer a bandara, you have to be, be rest assured that Ma Annapurna will come and she will, you know, ensure that the feast is cooked well. So you don't, also, you don't experience uh, stress at all when you see the hundreds of people there? I think uh, this is uh, this is Babaji's uh, grace. I I may I I want to add something. You know, as as a caterer, you know, to see throngs of people does not bother me. But what actually bothered me in Harakhan and in Chilianala was that there was, you know, there was no system. You know, we would like uh, one row to completely be served. And when they get up, then a fresh row to start. Then, you know, it is much easier for the service boys to serve in a good manner. This somehow, you know, we've not been able to master because, you know, people just come from everywhere. <laughs> this time in Chilianola, after, you know, this, it has been cordoned off. So we ensured now there are, you know, there, there are people who manage the gate. So we tell them once only uh, the entire row gets up, then you allow people to come in so they can be served in a much better manner. Instead, you know, four people here, six there, two here, one here. And also the second people who come in the second and the third lot, they have to be a little patient. They have to wait for their turn and, uh, just sit there quietly and observe things and let the you know hunger come to a level where they will be able to enjoy so this was very good you know this uh, the the uh, bandara area being cordoned off is actually a blessing to the service boys thank you i think 
don't know. I think many of us, you know, have served at the ashrams or or different things, functions of Baba's. And I and it's helpful for me to hear about Annapurna and a constant reminder to always hand it over to Baba. I remember in this great book, um, From Age to Age, that we translated of Sastraji's brother um, about okay. old Harakan Baba. And they were going to feed thousands of people, and people kept coming to old Harakan Baba and saying, What shall we do? What shall we do? You know? And he would just sit there and say, as you like, you know, and it all went perfectly. So it's, it's that kind of reminder to me and maybe to others, just helpful. Thank you, Sandeep. <laughs> also, also Ramloti, you know, uh, many old devotees are actually aging and uh, we all, many of us have restrictions on, you know, sitting on the floor Especially in Harakhan, I noticed uh, at the Gufa side, many people would choose not to sit on the Bandaria area, but they would prefer to sit on, you know, a wall next behind the hover because of their body restrictions. And uh, those, you know, because and holding that leaf plate and serving was is an art, you know, because you could drop and they could not eat properly. This I saw many a times, even at the Harakhan kitchen, uh, at the ashram side, many people chose not to come inside the kitchen, but they would sit, you know, on the, on the step of the Russian building so that they can sit in a comfortable posture. And, uh, you know, the boys had to go and serve them. But now that you have the dining hall, it may not be appropriate for many that, you know, you, you will be sitting on a, a chair and, you know, you pick up from the buffet. But then um, uh, it is, uh, you know, you need to look at the aspect that aging people need to be comfortable when they come for their spiritual practice. So um, that is also one very good thing which has happened in Harakhan. Thank you. Let's get some Italian flavor. Yes, let's have a little <laughs> Italian here. I know Romlote didn't go too much to Italy. He's, I mean, he's to the ashram, but also he has other things to share of previous ones as well. Go ahead, Romlote. Yes, thank you, Bolivar Vakijay. So this year I went only one day to Novaratri because it was quite cold and rainy. <laughs> the structure there is not very comfortable, comfortable. And also I was busy with some medical checks. So I could go only one day, but it was very nice atmosphere. Some 30, 35 people, many young one, ones that I didn't know. And they told me that during the weekend here in Cisternino, we were at about 50, 60 also. So I think it was quite successful and the people were happy. And they still speak about how harmonious it was, how good energy it was. And then I know that also there was celebrated in good fashion also in the ashram in North Italy and um, Annapurneshwari Ashram and also in the Candy Love Center in center near Assisi. So it was very nice as usual. And something <laughs> you can share about a previous Navratri you remember? Well, yeah, I, more, remember, more. It, I remember my first one. It was very curious also story, a little funny. Because I was uh, in charge of the Italian uh, restaurant, the chai shop in front of the Guffa. So Baba, in the days before he came and he said to me, we are doing, we are going to do here a big celebration. Many people will come and uh, after around 11, 11.30, you have to be ready with a, a lot of food because the people can't eat much before. So I said, okay. And then uh, all this celebration started. I saw all these people going, crossing in front of my restaurant, coming down <laughs> and going up. 
But you know, I was so taken by this uh, duty of the restaurant, uh, cooking and feeding people, that I had no desire, no curiosity even to, to go and see what was going on upstairs there. Then uh, after Bobby, <laughs> four, five, or six days, I when uh, I said, well, right, let me go and see what, what's going on. And I went up there from a distance and I saw the heaven from 30, 40 meters distance. And I already seen the Baba perform a Yagya in, in Chitai, in Chitai Mandir near Almora when I met him first in 78. So, and uh, I saw all this rice offered, all these fruits, you know, and all these things. And the, my first thought, very stupid, ignorant, and superficial was, my God, with all the poverty here, you know, to throw away all this good food. <laughs> Maybe it would have been better to, to organize some big feast and every, everybody can eat and, and enjoy, you know? So I was a little skeptic, but then I already <laughs> recognized Baba's greatness. So I said, but if he does it, it must it must be good somehow. And then, but I thought that he was doing it to respect some older tradition, you know. <laughs> that was my attitude. But also, I was never so keen with rituals. I still am not so uh, attracted to rituals. You know, I like them very much because they are a very good way to spend time, but I don't think they are fundamental, you know? I still remember Baba's teaching karma yoga and job, selfless service and the repetition of the name. You know, this is what can change the heart of man. Then rituals are for the joy of the spirit, I think. It's something we enjoy very much <laughs> to do, we like to do. But this is anyway, my, my insight on that. Also because when I was in that state there of total ignorance <laughs> about uh, everything, I still had this all this uh, incredible experiences with Baba, with the nature of what was going on so it was like uh, my ignorance of rituals and everything was not a hindrance to, to, to any kind of realization. Mm. So this is my thing. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, but maybe somebody, if I may join in to, to, because for me, the whole Navaratri is a very auspicious event, uh, at least once or twice a year that can bring, bring people also, especially new people in an altered state of consciousness to have this kind of divine concentration for nine days. Uh, I often say that all your senses, what you see is divine. You, you see the fire, the water, the, the, the people cleanly dressed up. You see mortis, you see flowers, you see have a divine vision of everything for nine days long. And also the sounds, you hear the mantra, the, the songs, uh, the beauty of, the, of whatever, the river and the fire. You smell the prasad, you, you smell the flowers, you smell the incense and other ingredients. It's such an intoxicating event. Uh, also the taste and even the touch. Everything is like our senses become strongly connected to a divine experience. And our mind is not so attracted to our normal worldly activities and worries. That's for me like the auspiciousness of this, this event is to take us into another dimension, almost another loka where we can easily connect with, a, like you say, the bliss. What is this bliss? This is something in our heart opens up, uh, which is free of suffering because we are nine days more and more concentrated in a quite natural way if you follow the program some do it just by serving in the restaurant and some do it by uh, giving the speeches at the Havan. it doesn't matter what you do but this concentration for nine days in this also divine environment where all your senses want to be happy you know it's not in, in a city like Moscow but it's in a either Hirakan or Chilionola both places are so enchanting that you really love to be there so something is opening up and that is for me very auspicious and i would like to give the indians a possibility 
the, how this came about. And I see this is a very beautiful thing that Westerners also feel very attracted to it, that it now, like Raghu Jivir posted, more than 15 countries are doing these havans and these, these Navaratris for nine days. So it is catching on. But how can you describe the auspiciousness of this festivity even better than me, like Reto, you go there so many times and what is your personal experience and understanding of why we do this ritual? Um, you know, uh, uh, rituals as, as I understand it in a very humble way, um, I have to confess that I was never a ritual person. And as, as uh, you know, um, uh, Ram Lota mentioned, you know, rituals, but I realized that what does rituals do is concentrate your senses, your entire being into that ritual. And you understand that there is a rhythm that you are getting into. The rituals get you into the rhythm, as you are saying, into tuning into a dimension. So when you're collecting flowers and putting it on the havan, there is a certain um, rhythm. There is a certain, in, in Hindi we say lay, so, you know, you, you sort of come into a sort of music rhapsody in your mind that you are following a certain thing and you are concentrating, taking God's name, singing and putting flowers, putting things, uh, doing the decorations and um, you're sitting in a particular posture. So it is all getting you tuned in. And then when the moment comes, you're ready for it and you open out your very being and your thinking to the divine. So the, the rituals at Chilianola or Herakan brought me to that realization that all this is uh, getting me into the frequency. And uh, um, I think I came once, the first time, very skeptically to Ranike, and I have never looked back. I go there despite everything and anything, whenever I can, for whatever time I can. And uh, you're so right in saying that uh, the entire thing plays out. It's the mountain region, it's the sunrise that you see, it's the mountains that look down at you, uh, it's the air, it's everything uh, sort of just blossoms. And uh, I think you uh, truly, in nine days, despite all the things you may say about your own lethargy or your laziness, they all disappear. You are just carried away by the energy of the place, and and you truly enjoy and 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 make the most of what is given to you as a beautiful gift. Mm -hmm. Beautiful, thank you. Uday, yeah. What I wanted to kind of uh, share, and I've often shared with, uh, of course, with Ritu, but with many other people, when I come back from there, is a realization that how little you need in life to be in bliss. You know, you can almost be a minimalist. You don't need anything in life. You don't need good clothes. You don't need good food. You don't need a good bed. You just, bliss is actually outside of all of those things. And uh, if you have the right uh, place and the right sort of atmosphere around it, then it just happens. You know, you, you are kind of subsumed in, in, in bliss and the realization again and again, I mean, this is not the first time and definitely will not be the last time that we have realized that when we are in our sort of daily life and we toil um, and, 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 you know, try to make things happen, uh, life seems much more difficult to manage each day. Whereas when you go to a place like any of these beautiful ashrams, etc., anywhere in the world for that matter, you need very little. You need very little to get into a state of absolute bliss, ecstasy, joy, where you have tears flowing down your your eyes for no good reason, you know, except that you're feeling very happy and that's the best way to, to express it. So that realization, I think you bring back with you, like you bring back all the good energy each time, twice a year from these kind of trips. And that then lasts with you. 
you know, and when you then value life in your day-to-day -day life, you know what is important and what is not important. And for me, that's a very big thing. Thank you. I tried. Sandeep, do you have anything more to add to this? You need to- Bliss? Yeah. Go ahead. He's always in bliss. <laughs> it is the grace of the divine. Uh, uh, I've always felt, you know, uh, uh, after Muniraji, I mean, uh, I miss uh, his presence in Chile and all, uh, and that's one of the reasons I, I uh, feel a little void uh, in me when I visit Chile and all, uh, not that I don't miss him in Harakan, but uh, uh, the presence of Babaji overtakes the uh, physical absence of Muniraji there. So I'm in a more blissful state in Harakan. But uh, Chilianola is, you know, always, I, I, I've I always considered uh, Muniraji as, uh, you know, a caretaker for Babaji in Harakan, a guru figure in Chilianola, and a friendly figure in Delhi. So whenever I visit Chilianola, I mean, I, I enjoy the surroundings, the mountains and the divine energy of the, the temple. But when I visit his uh, house, <clears throat> especially when I visit his small temple in the house, uh, I feel a little void, you know, but that's very, very natural. That's very natural. Uh, so just wanted to add something to what Sandeep said this year. We were in Muniraji's, uh, you know, old house every every day, twice a day to have our chai and all that, like in the previous years. And this year, after a gap of a couple of years, that those were for local custom issues, custom as in local ritual. We again did the havan in Muniraji's little kutia, which many of you. Uh, would remember from the old days. So we started that tradition back. I'm ready to dance. <laughs> but, thank you. Thank you all for all this. Um, one thing is this idea, I think, that maybe Pujari was leading to that is, you know, that you have kept these traditions and even maybe some fell away for a few years and then you reestablish them again, that they all do make such a difference. And I love what Ritu shared about how concentrated, you know, during the Navaratri or when you're putting the flower here, you're picking the flower, you're putting it on the haven. Um, how concentrated you might be at that, you know, are. And then my next thought is that then we take it home and we realize that all of our life in that sense is a, is a ritual. And so that every moment, you know, ideally that we spend, um, whether it's preparing some lunch for the people <laughs> we're living with, or we're, you know, preparing for the, for the temple ceremonies or whatever, it's with that same kind of um, focus and love. And so and I love that you're talking about going twice a year for recharging to the Navratri. So the perfect divine um, orchestration that is here in our lives where, you know, every two years, every, twice a year, spring and fall, it's time to go and get recharged at um, a very focused time with many people. And uh, then we come back to our lives and hopefully we can spread that throughout the, throughout the world. So thank you, yeah. More questions? So, uh, one more thing I just want to add because uh, you know there are many people here is that one other redeeming feature that I want to share with you um, is that our, our seva work, our service work through the hospital has continued. 
the eye hospital and in spite of the covid you know in spite of the covid where i'm sure we were not there most of the covid period there but in spite of the covid which restricted movement of people etc you know the hospital is there mainly to serve the local people who need uh, primarily eye care and actually i'm happy to kind of share with you that in terms of activity in terms of number of people that we operated and served our activity has actually gone up uh, compared to a year ago so that's a very redeeming thing because i mean here was a situation where almost nobody could get out of their homes or go anywhere especially in cities we had total lockdown etc and yet when i saw the report of the hospital the the i hospital not the ayurveda hospital ayurveda hospital had very little activity because most of the people couldn't come and so on but the i hospital which is a requirement you know which is like almost like a emergency for people local people who need eye care the number of people served has actually gone up in the last 12 months compared to the previous 12 months and i think that's a great blessing thank you sandeep thank you uh, i also i see melinda on the um on the zoom here melinda lives in columbia columbus missouri and because of the lockdown she's also being very careful with health and things like that and so i think this is a beautiful also i loved what raghuveer you know put around the world how many people were doing navratri and so we have uh, we can spend a moment with melinda who did a very quiet navratri but how did that go for you melinda well it's interesting i'm finding the conversation very interesting um not all of us can travel and be in large groups for these festivals um you know ramloti knows i i used to drive from missouri to colorado four or five times a year to be there for um whatever was going on um and i got this really strong message you know stay home do do it here so i i started doing that and um that has worked out well given that we've been having a pandemic <laughs> um so uh, my health is, is such that i i can't have people here i have a little temple in my backyard in a little haban kunt and i was had was very through generosity given the asan that babaji's photograph sat on in the um in the temple in crestone so that is installed in my my little temple uh, i tell the neighbors because i you know it's missouri i tell the neighbors it's my meditation room <laughs> um but so i don't have a crew of karma yogis running around anxious to make malas and prepare trays and gather firewood um and i think that's true for a lot of people but that does not prevent celebrating for those 9 days um in some way so it you know it was possible to have a fire um and uh and spend time in the morning um doing that that you know and and really I can't remember which one of you said, you know, that the service the service goes on uh, on a daily basis that the the your your devotion goes on on a daily basis. So for me, um I participate here in Missouri with the Buddhist community and I participate with the Sufi community and um we go once a month and we feed the homeless 
everybody cooks, everybody brings, everybody serves. And that's my Bandara <laughs> doing that. Right. Um, and, and, and it's all good. So thank you. Thank you. <laughs> thank you for sharing. <clears throat> Well, maybe I, I, sorry, I've been uh, busy to send to send to Kalwa the link from Italy that he can also join in. Uh, but I was touched by the words of Sand Sandeep and Uday, how we miss Munirazi somehow. And it, at that point, my memory came very back strong when they say they drink tea now again at the house where Munirazi was always sitting. But my memory goes far back then, there was no house. There was just a cow shed there. And I was staying in there with Ragu and Karku and, and Munirazi and uh, one, two more people in the very beginning with just one electric lamp and an oil lamp. I had to make that electric lamp for a few years uh, in there. And then we had a little bit chai, a very small chai kitchen. Uh, two by two meters little thing where we would make tea and it started from nothing and that was so beautiful that how also Uday expect you really you really need nothing we hardly had a, a blanket to sleep on and from our clothes we had to make a pillow it was super simple and we had a uh, he always told me Pujari make a good cup of tea so that's that's where I learned to use long elisi ginger black pepper what needs to go in a good cup of tea I learned that in the first years uh, serving Bonirazi during uh, Navarati but what a joyful time that has been I'm sure for Rago also these memories are, are divine moments in that simplicity and also through our devotion, it grew. And, and Karku is not on, but he was a big inspirer from we have to make this better. And then we really took a plan and put money together. We built him a little house. So then the first part of the house got built ground floor. Then uh, we added something. Then the duni was added. And then the second floor was added. There was nothing there. There was just a little garden and a cow shed. And now we sit there happily drinking tea. Uh, but it's beautiful to, to share my memories with you. It is such a, from nothing, something starts to grow like a flower. And also I'm very inspired to see that this is going on all around the world. All these ashrams are blossoming. Kalwa is trying to call me and I don't know. So I give the word away to give him an answer. How, he doesn't know how to get in. So please take over. Boy, <laughs> Kalwa. Raghu, do you have some memories of those oh, uh, too, or just other Navratri insights? Well, um, well, as Ramloda was saying, uh, at, when Babaji was there, Navratri had a totally different importance than when it, with Muniraj, it became institutionalized. I didn't know what it was about, uh, or Navratri when, uh, at Babaji's time. All of a sudden, he was sometimes sitting in a sari on the asam when they were doing uh, doing puja, but it was not really well put sari, but just a little bit draped around him or in some kind of a tunie, uh, a shawl. Uh, and then all of a sudden they were, but for me, from what? Also the Divine Mother, oh yeah, okay. Well, I was already so much devoted that I didn't care, but I didn't really understand. But all that came, came later uh, when it, when he started to read about it and started to talk with Shastraji in depth and spent a lot of time with Shastraji. So then it started to become alive. And now it is one thing for me, incredible. I don't need nothing. Uh, put me in a cupboard and I'll have a nice time <laughs> uh, It is uh, a beautiful celebration uh, every time. Uh, and I do that partly uh, by uh, writing and doing things uh, the last years. But uh, it is beautiful. This time we did it here in Kamalaya uh, for nine days, but only one day we did a big havan. And for the other eight days, we did a small havan, a silent havan, like they do in the Mahashakti Duni. And uh, there were 
about 10 people every day, except that one day when everybody was invited, there were maybe 30 people or something. But beautiful, anyway. No Devi Puja or something, but morning and evening Aati and, and, and Havan and keeping a certain focus. Very nice. It always works. Is what you put in, and the, what Ramlota was saying also before, uh, not into rituals. Well, when I arrived, all these rituals, I thought it was middle age. I mean, I was judging it. <laughs> uh, I thought, but, but what are they doing? But I didn't care because I, I, I had this thing, this incredible, unexplainable connection with Babaji. He had it, uh, that, that uh, inspiring things or whatever was he was saying or pointing at from that was good somehow. Um, but the ritual for the, this Devi Puja, for instance, what they do during Navaratri, if you look at it from a stranger and you see how in particularly now in this hugely fast speed, they throw water and, 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 and flowers at little crooked statues and uh, if you and, and this, if you look at from the outside, yeah, you think what a what, what a strange situation. But and I thought so for many years until I saw that Pujari was he was always being pulled into the to the front by Muniraji. Uh, that he was having also a hard time because uh, yeah, he was sitting in a whole bunch of people. Uh, so I uh, started to. Uh, support Pujari and be, be next to him and, uh, and uh, help him to hold the space. And uh, that was, uh, then I got into it. And now it is fantastic to do that. I could not imagine to go and sit in the tea shop or do other things. <laughs> uh, it is, uh, and it doesn't make any logical sense. For the rational mind, there is nothing. It is weird what we're doing there. But it really works. It's fantastic how it, uh, when you do these irrational things, how it still has some very actual <laughs> influence, uh, which works in all these things, but you do during Navaratri. But if you really do it with passion and with focus, whoa, that is so beautiful. That is so inspiring. That is so cleansing. That is so energizing, uh, even though it's very tiring also if you sleep very little and you run all day. But uh, it is, uh, at the same time, I wouldn't like to go for less. <laughs> <laughs> so rituals, yes, I love them. <laughs> And not everything. Actually, if you don't apply awareness to whatever you do, but particularly also to rituals, then it also becomes very shallow, like anything. What's coming to me is that um, I remember last week, I think, Hiramon, you talked about, you know, the honeymoon with Babaji and that, um, you know, everything else is, and, and, but Pujari and Raghu, you've related to that, you know, when you were with Baba, you were just focused on Baba and everything else was sort of interesting or like you said, even weird or unusual, under, not understandable. But it's almost like when he left his physical form, that these rituals are very helpful for us to come back into that connection with him. Um, I don't know. That's what's coming to me. Hiraman, do you have anything to say about any of this that we're talking about? Get off mute there. Well, to me, um, being with Babaji was always, a, and and especially in the ritual aspect, or even in every, his every footstep, but was a balancing of forces. And I think that's a big part of ritual, is that even if they're inner forces within ourselves or the fields that we exist in, so much of what Babaji did to me felt like a balancing of everything. And, and when we partake in the ritual cities inspired us to do, um, we, I think we all come away with a feeling of, of balance, you know, even if it's fleeting or, or we don't continue at every moment for the rest of our lives. We, we experience 
feeling the balance of, of not just within ourselves, but within everything around us. And, and that, to me, that is a, um, one of the main functions of rich ritual and, and, and joy. Yeah. And that, that those two are kind of interlinked. So how does this balance happen? But, uh, help me understand a little bit more. So they bring us into balance. Um, well, the forces of the world are, you know, if we look at it from a physics standpoint, we're all fields, you know, and, and, and a field is uh, a point in space and time that affects other point, points in space and time. And, and so we could get that metaphysical aspect of it, but it really is just about, we know in our hearts when we are in balance, we know in our hearts when we're doing what we should do. We know in our hearts when we can do better. And, and we know in our hearts when we're really helping people. So if we, I guess in a way, balance is just really listening to our hearts and, and listening to Babaji within us. I think that's, for me, that's what Babaji wanted the most is for us to really listen to ourselves and and be what we can be. Yeah, what, what can I a little bit add? I spoke with Kalwa, I think he will be getting on, but what I pick up on, on also the importance of uh, harmony, but also the aspect of ritual and devotion in an ashram, the whole ashram is built around this, no? from morning to evening, there's a rhythm. And this is to bring us in harmony from sunrise to sunset, that we have kind of a sane human rhythm. And that's been figured out by the Rishis and Babaji put that in front of us, how to wake up early, to have our bath, to take quiet time. The whole ashram is, is, is existing because of a, a rhythm and a, and a harmonious participation of the individuals that, that come to an ashram. And then it has that effect on us that we experience in our heart uh, more harmony than before, because we follow that simple rhythm. Uh, and we can do it with just a mantra or without a mantra or with ritual or without ritual. But the rhythm in an ashram is, is a very important aspect, aspect to bring harmony in, in, in us. So I wanted to point that out from, I see that's happening during Navaratri in a very intense way and very beautifully. You can be with 500 people together and there's an incredible harmony between this big group. And it's like magical. We don't throw dirtiness on the floor. We don't, it's, it's a beautiful gathering. And even in Holland, when we had a big celebration when Muniraji came and we had Sashtiji also four or 500 people, the villagers who came, they were surprised how we not were making a mess on our territory and after the festivity it was all clean but I said normally in the village when we have a festivity it's a big mess and we have to clean up for two days <laughs> if we have a celebration like this in the center of our village in, uh, so that is something very beautiful that we are uh, blessed to have this harmo harmony experience by following uh, a path that has been yeah, Babaji put it in front of our nose, but it's it's for it's so old. Let's say it comes from the Rishis, but it's a very beautiful thing that we've connected with that, and it's more beautiful to see that it's re-spreading around the world. Again, pointing to Ragu's mail from if you see fifteen to twenty countries where they are doing this Navaratis, I'm very impressed. From where can this go? No, this can only go. Uh, better and better that people will feel the benefit from this and they will participate more and more so it's very inspiring to see how Babaji's work is going on uh, in this way together with ritual uh, and worship yeah they go hand in hand if we do nothing it's very difficult to nothing to just sit together and do nothing no? maybe in 1970 71 to be around Babaji you could sit with him and try to do nothing. But Babaji laid out this quite elaborate uh, program for us to participate in from morning to evening. That seems to work. Yeah. 
I think really rhythm and, and balance are synonymous, you know, it, they, <laughs> they're inseparable in a way. Like if we're, if we think of when Pujari is playing music or someone else is, and we're all singing together, when we're in the rhythm together, then this beautiful, everybody's voice comes out in a beautiful way. And, and it, it, it's just, it's different. It affects the world differently. So right. I think you, when you were asking Ramlodi, how do we find balance? I think like Pujari said, rhythm and <laughs> And, and there's rhythms in nature all around us, you know, I mean, everything is, is rhythm and balance. Well, and I think this balance that, um, that you're speaking about, it makes me think of why, you know, you wouldn't think to throw a piece of trash you know, because inside you just feel that, no, you know, this is what I've just, you know, used. I should pick it up and dispose of it properly. So it, in response to what the villagers said around, you know, Holland, you know, around Lunen is that, Lunen is that, you know, it's, everybody takes such care because it's all precious and the whole world becomes precious, like you said, Hiramon when we're in balance and we wouldn't want to disturb or hurt anything or anybody or any any piece of nature, so any part of nature. So it's a deep teaching that I think we're, we, you know, we're participating in. It looks like Uday is going to leave us. Thank you, Uday, for all you Thank are you. sharing and Ritu also very beautiful, such touching, touched my Thank heart. You. Thank you, Bole Baba Ki Jai, and I look forward to be with you again. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Anytime. Thank you, Adai. I was, what we had been saying, that reminded me of something that is maybe the most beautiful explanation of fire ceremony that I heard from Shastriji here in Chisternino. And one day he said, you know, the rishis of the old times, the ancient uh, sages and seers of the Vedic, of the Vedic period, while observing the creation, they realized how it was, it is, it was based on sacrifice. So he said, you see the rocks, the mountains sacrifice themselves let themselves to be eroded by rain and, and wind to become soil for uh, the vegetables to grow. Mm -hmm. And the vegetables sacrifice themselves for the animals, they become food for the animals and the, and the vegetables and the animals sacrifice themselves to become food and energy for the man. And so the, the rishis, invented this, uh, this uh, fire ceremonies to like a way to say, we understood, <laughs> oh Lord, we know, we understand what's, what's going on. We can try to help. And so we will evoke this also in our lives because sacrifice, you know, is a very beautiful word also. It comes from Latin, it's sacrum facere, and the sacred doing. Mm -hmm. So there is this way of doing things that is sacred somehow. And so this is very nice and very deep for sure. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, sacrifice, if you see, there is always a death, you know, because uh, something has to be destroyed for something new to grow. So the, the rocks lose their, their strength to become soil, but that's how the plants can grow. And then the plants get destroyed for the animals to survive. So there is this cycle of uh, destruction and rebirth somehow that is very um, evoking also in our, I think, uh, uh, personal experience. We can see also in our, in our personal lives, you know, every time you achieve something is because you left something else be behind, you know? You have to kind of die. <laughs> To, to live again. Also the cycle of day and night is like this, no? Every evening is, 
these days I comes to me now every evening we fell into oblivion. We don't know anything. We lose everything we have and we fall in sleep. And then every morning we wake up and it is completely a new beginning. Then we, our conditioned mind thinks, oh, it's a day like yesterday. No, it's not a day like yesterday. It's a new. Every moment, every day is new. So this uh, ceremony is, as Pujari and many others evoke this, I think, cycle of life. Right. Very beautiful. Very beautiful. Thank you. Oh, here you are from Italy. Calua. Wow. It took me many mails. Ti devi togliere il mute, Calua. Devi togliere il mute. Ecco. Bravo. But, but still, but still, my English is not good. So mute, no mute, doesn't change so much. <laughs> I cannot talk in English. <laughs> I like to see all of you. So nice to see many brother and sister together. Sometime, yes. So we had also nice Navaratri and sister Nino. It was quite long time. It was about three years. We didn't go down for Cist in Cister Nino. And uh, it was nice coming back. So uh, it was a little difficult. It was quite raining every day and cold. So we are thinking to make a roof on top of the Avankund because if it's going uh, raining every day, you have to do inside, inside so much smoke inside the other room and uh, but everything was going well so quite some people was there so uh, it was very beautiful yes and uh, I don't know also to hear about so many Navaratri going on here and there and I saw many pictures of Thailand and uh, and Holland uh, and uh, many other places. So is is a beautiful disconnection that people all over the world doing this kind of sacrifice of ceremony. So I think is very good uh, cleaning the atmosphere and uh, and uh, helping the nature and helping the people all around. So I thank so much. Babaji and Muniraji, that they teach us a little bit how to do this, uh, this thing. And uh, <laughs> let me ask you a question. May I ask you a question, uh, Kalwa? You've done yeah. many, many Navaratris, but can you share a little bit from, from the beginning until now, what does this process do to you? On, on a personal level, if you do this nine day, uh, like tapasya or this nine day concentration exercise or however you want to call it, what, what has it done to you? And why do you value it, if you value it? Oh, uh, well, um, when I was doing Novaratri uh, every year, like I was still living in India, so we do, uh, and uh, two Novaratri, three Novaratri with Munirajis Novaratri in his home. So it was quite uh, um, more a routine and usual to do this. But anyway, it was very beautiful time because, like you say before, it's a kind of discipline that it makes you really wake up. When you wake up early morning and you start to pray and you do some meditation and you do japa and then you sing the arti every day for nine day and fasting and some more japa because it's Novarat. So it increases every day. You get, you feel this energy coming more and more. Like you, you feel less uh, to sleep, you feel less to eat and you feel quite powerful. So it is, uh, it is, uh, it's, it's really that it works. It really, it, it really works. 
And then when, like this time, it was a long time, I don't do Navaratri. In the beginning, it was very, very difficult because uh, I couldn't sleep in the night because many noise in the, in the dormitory and then it was very cold. And then in the first two, three days was very tough. And they said, wow, Baba, what? How <laughs> very difficult this time. But and then you keep a little bit more and then at, it's like slowly, slowly, it come everything sweet. Even the cold is nice, even the smoke is nice, even everything is good. <laughs> and that was everything was nice. <laughs> but then, then was finished, Navaratri. <laughs> yes, and then when we come back from all these nine days, uh, we, we are quite full of good energy to start again here at home, uh, some work, and uh, we, feel, uh, we feel like some uh, recha recharging, I don't know, <laughs> like we recharge the battery somehow. Uh, so, and uh, of course, sometimes uh, some nice experience coming when we are all together, some very magic moment can come out also in front of the fire on. So, uh, Navaratri is a very, very, very special festival and it's very long. So you have quite some time to go deeply inside. And the fire make the rest when you sit in front of this big fire with all this smell of all the offering we are doing and uh, you see burning all this offering and uh, it, it's very touching. It's something very, even if, if we have done so many times, I have done many times, but still every time it's touching. And then in the fire, sometimes you see something else. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, beautiful. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> so who's next with a question or a story about Navaratri? I have a question. Every time I do the fire ceremony, and then at the end, we make the mother arti to the fire. Why the mother arti? The fire, the fire is the shakti, eh? Yeah. The fire yeah. Is, is, is shakti, is pure movement all the time. Shiva is immovable, eh? It's like a lingam, an enormous, all we see is it's, it's, uh, the, 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 the fire is the Shakti. This is what I understood at least. Yeah, if I look at it same, it's like in the early morning when we do the Paduka Puja, we do the like the Kapura Garam, we pray to Shiva, to Babaji, as, a, as an incarnation of Shiva. But the nine days long, we are devoted to the mother in all her different forms and all energy, all movement is the Devi, all movement. Now, the, the Shiva is the space in which all movement and manifestation happens. So we only worship in the early morning, we worship the space uh, in which the day will happen in form and energy and, and transformation and explosions and, and whatever is happening energetically. That is, uh, in my understanding, that's why mostly during the day, we do the Devi Arti uh, after the fire in the, to the Padukas, because Babaji also said, my form is from the mother. The, the, the Devi gave him this form. So he is, yeah. we all have a form that came out of a mother. So the mother is, is, is so important. I think that's why also the Navarati is completely centered about the, yeah. the Durga Devi or Heri Kandi Srima in all her forms and beauties and, and from Kali. <laughs> to Saraswati and Lakshmi no, as our main deities. But it is the energies that keep moving through us that you will see moving through us. Then we are on the floor as, as because Kali is standing on us. And then we stand up again in bliss and are dancing around in, in another form. And Babaji could embody all these different energies also from the mother to my taste that he could, he could be very lovable, very fierce. Uh, he, he embodied the, all these devis. <laughs> so we worshipped him 
also we could worship him as a Devi because he was able to, how you say, embody all these Devis uh, in front of our nose. And, and more time passes, the more deeper I understand what I've been experiencing in those days with Babaji. No? It was a, a magical performance of all the Devis going through, manifestation moving through him. And it, like I said, it could be Hanuman, but in Navarati time, it was mostly, he was worshipped as a Devi. We put the Chudi on top of him. We, we, we see the goddess dancing through him. So I hope this helps you a little bit, Ramloti, but Navarati is, is a Devi festivity. So I think that's why we do the Mother Arti mostly. It's written also, no? Erakandeshwari. Erakandeshwari will reside in the heart of, of, of Baba. So for how I understand it, it's the, the love energy of Baba, it's the mother. Hmm. No, thank you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, thank you. I like this idea of the love. For me, the smell of the haven every day. I mean, I smell it on our ashram land every day. And it's like, it's, I, it's my favorite smell in the whole world is the all the samagri and the ghee and the coconut all burning and <laughs> and then this idea of just the love you know the love of the fire spreading everywhere thank you mm. yeah i just for me it's helpful to have more understanding of each thing and everybody has a different you know a little bit of a different take on it because I've asked many Indians different questions and I get such an array of answers, but it doesn't matter. It's not like one's right or one's wrong. It's how they experience it and then it enriches me. So thank you. A lot of flavors season the broth. Exactly. Kalva, do you have any response to that? I guess you were in the Duni so much doing the RT to the Duni. Kalwa. Oh, Kalwa, what? You have to <laughs> unmute yourself. Yeah. I was, I was asking you if you had any response to when you would do the Mother RT at the end of the Havan each day in the Duni. Ma Shakti Duni. Ma Shakti Duni. Eh, Ma Shakti Duni, very special place. Ma Shakti Duni, you do puja to the mother. <laughs> Because she's the mouth of the mother, but sometimes you can see Babaji inside the dune. You see Babaji, you see Babaji very small, very, very little, like this little, and then come very big. And then, uh, yes, uh, it's, it's, it's the mother, the dune is the mother, so it's very sweet. It, for me, it's different than the Murti. The Murti of American Baba, very beautiful, very strong, also. And also his both, his also mother and father together, but uh, more strong, Duni more sweet. I, this is my personal feeling <laughs> happening to me after some years of food I did in in Arakan. Yes, and uh, but uh, yes, when you do with love, when you do with uh, also discipline, and then beautiful experience, Baba give to you and uh, and then uh, you will never forget this experience yes it will help in the life for sure oh, God, thank you God. thank you Ramloti uh -huh. this is Pam I have a question Go ahead. So, Pat. yeah, at the end of the fire ceremony, when you're carrying Babaji's picture away, there's that chant. Can you tell us what does that mean? The Oshar uh, Sabdan. Sabdan. Ragu, he, is, uh, he knows this very well. <laughs> Oshar Sabdan. That's, well, uh, literally, you see it also on road signs <laughs> in India. It means be attentive and stay alert. Uh, but then in between there is the sentence uh, that uh, 
the Lord is the Lord of Kashi, the Lord of uh, Varanasi is coming, that is Shiva. Uh, and the other one is the great Lord is coming. We are uh, shouting that loudly. <laughs> Oshar, Savdahan, Sri Sri Mahaprabhuji Patar, hey, hey. On the first. It's a warning. Uh, it's a warning. Wake up. <laughs> well, I, I feel it like that. We, it started when we, when we, when Babaji went to Kedanath and Badrinath on this tour. Yeah. We were walking up 18 kilometers. And there he started uh, that we should say it. So we said that and that uh, we proclaimed it and. But then we kept doing that um, also when Babaji was around. Uh, but more with the Padukas, after it became really a strong thing where we were moving in a big club, uh, actually organized by uh, many by Muniraji. Uh, and together we got these ideas. But uh, <coughs> yeah, it, but now for me, it means also more in terms of awareness because this Osha Sabdan is something what we have to do 24 hours a day. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, she was there, Osha Sabdan. Be attentive and be Wake alert. up, be alert, yeah. Does that help it you, Padma? <laughs> Any more on the subject or? <laughs> yeah, I have a question regarding that too. Okay, go ahead. So um, the so the awareness. So when we are doing the rituals, there is a possibility that our awareness will be could be lost. So do you um, have any techniques that keeps us in awareness throughout the day or throughout at least during the ritual time? Because when we say ritual, it has become ritualistic in many situations where. We just do physically, but mentally we are somewhere else. So is, what are the techniques that do you use to bring it back to the awareness all the time, more, more frequently? I mean, Osha, Shamadhan is definitely one, but... Oh. That is the awareness. You have to do it again and again. It's just like in the old, in the old fun fair where you had a, a gun and you were shooting down the ducks, which were passing by. Jig, jig, jig. Every time the, thought, the thoughts come up, they, you have to uh, recognize them and uh, leave, let them go. Uh, don't attach yourself to it. Practice, so lots and lots of practice. Yeah. And I answer that from my experience. Uh, this Navratri was the first one where I sat for a Havan and it was really amazing. It was just mind blowing and the process was, I basically died, I'm not gonna go into details. But then when I, um, then I started seeing him everywhere and, and feeling it. And I just was thrown into this like energy field, like the frequency, like uh, what the lady was saying, you're just in a different, different frequency. And then I realized I just have to follow the frequency and just keep it going and just being aware and noticing what is happening. And then during the day, the day, what feels like what's happening, what feels like, you know, when you're in the internet and you have uh, your uh, web page open and it just like reloads, refreshes. Like what would happen to me, I would just like, my eyes, I would feel like pressure here and just relax and then felt the energy coming down and it just felt refreshed. And I realized I just have to follow that through the whole day. Just like, it's like Babaji Wi-Fi and is the best Wi-Fi in the world. You know, it just, it gets reloaded, reloaded and just keeps you going through the day in that frequency and that energy. So that's why I feel it now. I just want to keep it going. Nice. Yeah, Mohan, I think all, all this ritual uh, gets it in, into this alert state in a, in, a, in a deep way that we get centered in our heart and the art is to stay there. And then it comes in Hoshya Savdan. And like Ram, Ram Lota said, every day is brand new. If we don't allow our mind to take it over, we really have a beautiful new experience every every second. And that's the Hoshiar Savdan for me is also uh, be alert. Before your mind takes over your life, stay with me. 
that's that's like an energy that Babish is constantly calling, stay with me, follow me, and don't follow your mind. You no, know, I give you a mantra, I, I, I'm there. Are you with me or are you going somewhere, wherever you go with your mind? That's for me the greatest thing. If you're in, in ceremony or in, in, what did you say, some uh, special activity of devotion, you can touch that space quite easily. If you sit around the fire, if you sit in the Mahashakti Duni and sing bhajan for a few hours, you're in another dimension. You're in a divine dimension. But the art is to stay there. And that is, that is part of also your question. And I remember traveling with uh, Mahamanda Leswar. He said, it's so beautiful. You are so nice. You sit here for hours with me in this puja. And we sing and have a beautiful time. But then when we stop this, you all are like piggies. Piggies. You roll in the mud, get completely dirty, start to cry, and you don't know how to get out anymore. And that's a little bit <laughs> what we do. We can have a beautiful ceremony or Navaratri, but then we roll in the dirt. And, and uh, how to not do that? That's your question, Mohan. That's, no, you have to stay alert. You have to uh, remember him every second. Uh, or you let your mind and emotion take over. For sure, you're gone. You become a dirty piggy again and cry and think, oh, Baba, help. <laughs> yeah, he's there all the time. But we, we, we give the diamond away. We give the diamond away all the time. I think that's yeah. the, the beauty of Baba. said, Hoshya, done. stay with me. No, don't leave me. Just, just stay in your heart. I think, Hiraman, you can say something. What is this tapasya to stay in this moment, centered in your heart, it's, it's the essence of Babaji's teachings and Gorotnath's teachings almost. Um, I think it's about cherishing that. You know, it's about cherishing that connected moment and, and, and learning to just living, live with that. You know, I mean, and in the heart, it like Jesus said, you know, wherever your treasures are, that's where your mind or I don't know if I'm <laughs> saying this right, but, you know, treasures, they all, all these little tempting things around us that glitter and seem like treasures. If we just cherish what is eternal in ourselves and, and this gift that we've been given, I think. I think it's we have to practice that we have to practice cherishing and and so our priorities become more automatic like then we're in the rhythm like when we're in the rhythm of doing the the rituals then we're really in the rhythm of cherishing that that moment and so it's always really coming back to the moment and um that's what the heart is it's being in the moment for me you get it mohan yeah thank you thank you yeah it, <laughs> it's yeah it, everything every small thing helps because yeah. um every ideas of yeah cherish what is important to you and uh, uh, be in the moment and uh, make this uh, the shavdan is kind of a reminder oh you are ending the, this one but make sure that you are continuing <clears> the <throat> same thing yeah all of those right Every, yeah. every one of it helps me. Mohan, and it's practice. Uh, practice. Yeah. And Mohan, what's been helping me is just every moment asking Baba, what do you want me to do next? Because I have to say my mind in this busy world of running an ashram um, can get really overwhelmed. And um, I spoke about that a little bit last week, but really just this idea of, like you said, Ramota, waking up is like, okay, here it is, this new day. And I don't need to plan it necessarily. I just, what do you want me to do, Baba? And each step, doing it that way, is just, I don't know. It's so beautiful. It's just, it's just grace. It's like a ritual all day long of just walking in Baba's feet. And that's what that saying reminds me. The great Lord walks here. It's walking, you know, that I actually see Baba's, footprints you know that he's walking on this holy land on this holy earth and everywhere so 
Um, that's what ha helps me. It's like, what do you want now, Baba? Every moment. And then I just do it and it's like, okay, what now? Okay. <laughs> it's, I feel like it's the, the blessing of this last Navratri that was a little tumultuous. Not, it was not the usual, just bliss. This time more of the Devis were sort of working on me, I guess. And what I'm seeing as the results, this, this last couple of weeks or this last week particularly is um, just really experiencing Baba as everything and all around me and he's in control and everything's going just fine. <laughs> so thank you all. There is Shekhar Chant is on the line. Do you want to share something about your Navaratri experience? You've been quite a few times and I want to give you the opportunity if you want to share something. Um. You have to unmute yourself, you're muted. And normally on down on the left side of your screen, there's a little microphone and you have to click on it in the down corner of your screen on the left. <laughs> so, yeah, now you are unmuted, but we still can't hear you right. So I'm not no, sure, it's, maybe it's, it's your not microphone. Going in. If you figure it out, let us know. We'd love to hear from you. There is, there is a microphone mute too. There may be a microphone mute too. So. Oh, these computers. Yeah, there is. I don't know. You have a strange sign also close to your name that I don't understand. But uh. maybe. On, okay. But it's not going. Well. That's another problem. Yeah, maybe I another we time. We would love to hear your sharing. I want to take this time while we are all together to um, sh to share that um, Mina Chandra, who has been on uh, a few of these satsangs and is a very huge part of uh, keeping things going in India with a, a daily meditation and, and practice, um, She's in the hospital um, undergoing some hopefully minor surgery. And so we wanted to just remember her. And also our Ramlota, who's uh, being having testing going on for, I don't, is that okay to share that we also keep you in our prayers too with some. Thank you. Yeah, that we just want to hold. So maybe we could just spend a moment in prayer, sending love and. Baba's blessings to these folks and any folks that are needing of love. So let's just spend a moment here in quiet prayer. May we could all say together the Triambakam mantra. Um, Pujari, would you lead us? Okay. I'm unmuted. <coughs> yeah, you're, um, you're unmuted. Om Triambakam Dujamahe 
शुकंडी पुष्टि वर्णनम उर्वाकमी वंदन मृत्योर्मुक्षीमृता त्र्यंबकमे शुकंडी पुष्टि वर्णनम उर्वाकमी वंदन मृत्योर्मुक्षीमृता त्र्यंबक जामे शुकंडी पुष्टि वर्णन उर्वाकमी वंदन मृत्योर्मुक्षीमृता त्र्यंबक जामे शुकंडी पुष्टि वर्णन उर्वाकमी वंदन मृत्योर्मुक्षीमृता त्र्यंबक जामे शुकंडी पुष्टि वर्णन उर्वाकमी वंदन मृत्योर्मुक्षीमृता सनावतु सनौनक्तु सीर कवाहे तेजस्वीनावीतमस्तु मिशामहे ओ शि 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 Thank you all for being with us today. And next week we'll have our Vin Lal, who's the chairman of the Samaj. Um, he can only be on for one hour, so we will start promptly at the designated time. Um, and then afterwards we'll have time for more satsang and questions. So keep your questions. I've got more. So thank you. I'm going now. Yes, we're all going to go. Go. बाबा की जय